Can you hear me now? For some reason, my laptop just muted the laptop. I don't know why. My mouse wasn't anywhere near it. So hopefully you can hear me now, SG. Good. That's good. I don't know what happened there. I know my mic on the laptop was unmuted. And then once I've done a check on my external mic, I looked around and my other mic was muted. Don't know how that happened. So I'm sorry about that. As I was saying, the phone call, I will not play. I will not play. Right. It's been plaguing up and edging up all over YouTube and even on Facebook, on some Facebook stuff, really. So I won't play. Hold on. Okay. Just be quiet now, please. Oh. Thank you, SG. Um, so I won't be playing that video, that recording. But what he was on about was web sleuths. Now, if you heard that recording, he called them something else first. And then he was corrected by the peer, by Heather, and he went, oh, yes, web sleuths. And I thought, he's out of boarding hand. Right? He called the other PI a C word. He called the web sleuths, web, web sleuths. Now, you think of web sleuths. But take the E, the U, and the H out of sleuths. And just use the, the U, T, and S. -E. Then you got the word. So I'm not playing it. But he's on about something that how uh, one of the PIs put it out there that she had this information, and then everyone was jumping on the bank wagon and tracking down her, her Katie's family. Well, I'm sorry, but it was CP that mentions Katie, Katie's name first because CP said, is it about Katie, me or someone else? I'm not sure what he said, but he mentioned Katie's name first. So she said, yes, Katie. She never said her name first, he did. Hi there, Rita. Good to see you in here. Right, so I'm going to find, play that one by the web slips. In fact, I might play the whole link because there's bits in it. I was listening to today, this morning, before I had to go out. I was thinking, oh, did I hear you watch a live, a YouTube live? You always, always, right? Let's go. Let's have a look.
Es ist so ein Latzablock. I think it is. That grey use or whatever. I just want to make sure this is yeah, I think it is, but yeah. Right, we're gonna go and play this. Comes up online, okay? Oh, come on. Put the volume on, oh, on, share it. Look how people are to share it, wouldn't it? Oh, you can hear the recording. I had no recording going. <laughs> I'm just going to start the recording now. Right. This, I've watched a couple of times now. But it's true, every time you watch a video, you do pick up on other things. Like, the words are used. And things like that. Shut down. Just the a phone. A sign. It no, it does not matter. Oh god, god. That boy is loved by me just like he is my own. Just like he's my own. Okay. Uh, Chris, let, let, may I ask you something? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, I've been doing this for a long time, and, and let me tell you why people are asking. Uh, personal questions about you and your wife. Okay. okay, it's it's because of the situation in which Sebastian has gone missing, and they're wondering if what ever happened between you and your wife does it have something to do with Sebastian going missing? I swear to you, it's not to be nosy. It's not to be rude. It's just trying to figure out what happened to Sebastian. And okay, so let me make, let me make this even crystal clear for you. Okay. And everybody out there that's got all these negativity, disgusting comments. Right. Yes, she gave it to, to her client because he was her client at the time. And he's entitled to hear everything that's been said and read everything. Right, he's paying her, so she he did give it to her and some others. And I understand at one point last night, she, Heather blamed another YouTuber, which I'm not going to say the name, right? Um, I thought, why would you do that, Heather? Why you're as bad as anyone else by doing that, you know what I mean. And then we found out, yes, she had passed it to Seth. But Seth, we believe, gave it to Nina. Because that phone call I heard, apparently, right, apparently, was played in their court hearing yesterday. Right. Right, so that so if Chris was on um, a Zoom link and he heard that phone call being played, then he's gonna be enraged about this. Enraged, and I must admit, I would be. Right, but this, uh, I believe, Seth did give it to Nina, and he did it in the right way. In the right, on with the right mindset, he does not want Nina to lose her daughter Faith to CP. He doesn't want her daughter ending up under the control of CP. You know what I mean? Christ, they've already got one child missing. Uh, apparently, I heard today Kate has gone to Acapulco or something like that. It's just, is that just a 
a rumor or is it true? I don't know. But it's a bit strange. I want to think she's gone away to Acapulco, Polka, or whatever it's called. Sorry, I am really bad at pronouncing names of places. Shoot me. I don't care. I'm sorry. Anyway. And I thought, it's a bit strange that apparently she's now gone away somewhere and everyone has been asking to see proof of Katie. So, we'll get on to that in a minute anyway. I want you to listen to this. I'll speed it up because it can be a bit, a bit. okay? And questions that y'all think you know anything about when honestly you don't know a damn thing and that's the problem you assume you speculate all this crap you have no idea what me my family my wife everybody involved is going sorry about the interference i'm getting interference oh i hate i hate it's the streaming app i really do I'm going to look around for a streaming gap. I pay more money. I'll look for a better one. Going through. To include Seth, his mom, and everybody else. Okay. Because it's the vile, disgusting crap that comes out of people's mouth. Yes, I'm a very pissed off stepfather to this whole situation. Okay. Uh, and I, I understand and I hear what you're saying. But again, he gave it to me. So she could use the court case against the child custody to show the courts exactly the type of blood that is going trying to get custody of her daughter. That's why. And I don't blame him. I didn't think if I was given that. CP's ex wife, you know, a child custody case, I would give her any information which would help her to stop CP getting that child. Yeah. So let me help y'all something. Okay. Y'all said some shit that's really, y'all have no, it's really none of your damn business, but since you brought it up, I'm clearing. Okay. My parents didn't go to Alaska two days after we went missing. I don't think well, my parents went to Alaska was because my stepfather went for work. Okay, nobody said they went two days after he went missing. Oh no, it's out there. Trust me, because I have. Okay, terabytes. I did not say that. Nobody said you. That okay. I said people. Okay. Now I have terabytes of videos of Seth on here saying some vile stuff. I've got videos of everybody and their comments out here. But trust let's me, go. what I'm bringing to you is not that I'm. Oh, he's got. I still, I've said, didn't know you had a lisp. Anyway. So he's got all these terabytes, whatever terabytes are, on set, saying all this vile stuff. Now, well, Chris, got more than that on you. Really. All Seth's ever was the ex. And you only mentioned that because you peed him. So, with all your lies and all your interviews, right? That he had in your and the fact that you was holding that over his head. Such as, if I tell everyone about your son being a P, then no one will look for your son. Now, if that isn't blackmail, right? And then you're talking about the pull-up situation. Yeah? Seth said when he was at the house, because someone asked him about that. He didn't. 
Bastion. His house. He didn't have. He didn't have that problem. He didn't have that. Problem. Right. Whereas Chris would not let Sebastian wear normal underwear. On the pants. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I'm going good. I'm going to be little finger babes. Yes, you can. <laughs> he's just coming and he said, How's it going? And he's going to be a good bit, yeah. <laughs> anyway, that's about the public situation. Seth said, When he was at his house, he didn't wear them, he didn't need to. We got to the point where pull yourself out of the air. I understand. No. Normal boxes in at home to the point where they were playing with a uh, when he went home on a Sunday. Now, Seth only answered a question on that pull-up situation. He didn't bring that. Brought that up. The S, I think, that was CP holding above his head. That's the only reason he brought that out as well. No, and Chris, I'm glad you cleared that up. That's a so, good... by the way, they didn't go for a month. Okay. They went for two weeks. My stepdad went on business. My mom went with him. But it's really nobody's business. Well, but, but Chris, let me, and, and please understand... I swear to God, I'm coming from a place of understanding because I've been doing this for years, okay? Here's the thing. When you ask the public for help, they're going to look at everything and try and figure out what happened to Sebastian. And let me tell them from an outsider looking in, it's okay, his parents left town shortly after. Was there a reason? Did, he take, did they take Sebastian with him? It is speculation that I am sorry it's hurtful to you, and I understand it. And that's why it's important that you clear to be hurtful or mean. I promise you, we've all been asked to help find Sebastian, and this is what we do. We, we try and think. Thinking outside of the box mm -hmm. does nothing but cause speculation, and it causes people to call in tips that don't mean anything, that you're taking sources away from the investigation because Joe Schmo down the street thinks that in two tips, okay. Could be a week later or two weeks later, right? He's taking a, that don't mean nothing. He's taking sources away from the investigation and the search. Uh, CP, what have you just done? What did you just do? And we'll talk about that. You don't want someone said okay, wait till this court case. Like this court case and come out. I out yesterday that phone call. No. I think it was yesterday or this yeah, it must have been yesterday because it was on a YouTube this morning and well several youtubers this morning and so it must have come out last night after i shook down and went to bed so that oh i'm going to forward because i want to get to the beat is this no that's Again. Right. We have that stupid guy Gray Hughes comes up. No, we don't want to see that. We don't want to see him do it. No, no. He's up there longing up. But I think Seth comes up very 
Hmm. School is that what you're saying? Correct, and it's not really homeschool. I mean, it's it's. Oh, John. I missed to miss when he first come up. And what did they did the dogs hit outside? So, as you know, if anybody has followed Mr. Grady's, but he was talking about the dog and the tree on the stand and the overlay on the picture. So they're anywhere from 13 to 18 different dogs have been okay. involved in this search. Mm -hmm. Now on day one, there was five dogs, five. There's an audio dispatch tape that's been released. I don't know who released it, whatever. I don't have it, but you'd have to dig it and find it. In that audio tape, you actually hear that the deputy sheriff does state that the dog. The dog. The dog. It was the dog. It was one dog on that dispatch call. Now I'm sure that dispatch call went on right up to I think eleven hours of it. Right? Now if there's other dogs that had hit, right? Dog handlers by law enforcement have had dogs who had hit in that scent, it will come through came through on that dispatch call saying anything about their dog I sent. Not one, just first one. No others. So when he goes on about three dogs and all his 15 dogs plus but only just hit on a scent, I don't believe that. I believe one dog hit on a scent. Hold on, I've just got to shut my window because my cat is climbing up it. And if she push, if he pushes it hard enough, it'll go out the window. And I'm 14 floors. 14 floors high. Come on. Yeah, leave it. Just super cat, you know, don't mind. So on that dispatch call, it was one dog, not three. It would have been on the dispatch call if another law enforcement during that day who, who was with job sent. It would have been on that dispatch call, but it wasn't. And that's what he doesn't like. He doesn't like the fact that that dispatch call got released as well. That's what he went through the to direct to the sheriff's office and not 911. Right? 911 calls are recorded. I don't believe if you find yes, that is. But because that then went to a dispatcher, whoever, it, that's recorded, the dispatch call. But the, nine, the first call, the three way call, was not recorded. Hence, to set and it takes over off to the retention pond and the construction site next door. Okay. Now, other dogs did the exact same thing. Now, am I going to say every single dog? No, but I do know of at least three dogs that went on the same scent trail, same path. The rest of the dogs, I'm not going to tell you that they are 100% honest and perfect and accurate because sure. honestly, dogs are only probably 25% reliable mm -hmm. when it comes to a scent. Okay. Um, now, eight days, I've had dogs in my house the first eight days. In my house, outside my house, around the house, around mm -hmm. the neighborhood. So, yeah. So, they've been there and, yeah, so they did, you're saying they did hit and they all went they to that these. No, I no? didn't say all that. I just told you. I've had 13 to 18 dogs in my house and around my house. Mm -hmm. I told you three different dogs. It on the same path that go to that retention pond. Right. I'm That's not what I'm saying. Say every other dog. Not every dog, but some dogs hit. Okay. Right. So, but I want this to be crystal clear. Okay. So when people say every Clear. Crystal clear. Yep. We hear it, Chris. Yep. Crystal clear. I still want to get to that. 
comes into because I know he comes up for but then he drops out. He's had a bunch of people following him, whether or not he chose that or they, these people decided to do it on their own accord. That's not for me to say. But we, Katie and I, are not going to have some big, massive search party following us around with a bunch of people that were already threatened death threat, by the way, to us. You know, I, I'm not doing that. If you were in my shoes, you'd do the same. So, it's like saying, why are you and your, well, your family or friends following with death threats to this? Tell us that, Chris. Right? You're the only one who don't want Sebastian fan. I can't see Lord people out issuing death threats. Right? I can't see TBI doing that. But I can see you maybe with your family. Don't know. Just my opinion. Right? I can see you, your family. Rings. If you do that. Any things you have, people that have you and your family, because for some reason you and your family have got a hold. <laughs> Enforcement. We all know about the little powwows you're going to have weekly with the enforcement have with power power socks, I should say power power. We all know about that little powwow meeting. Each week, going, they going, oh, law enforcement meet up with them, and they have their little meeting, their coffee and dinner. How much are you brought to the police? Just my opinion. Just my opinion. Not fact. And I will put it out there, not either Katie, Chris, or Seth, or any the name of the suspect. They are innocent until proven guilty. Same thing. You listen to law enforcement, you do what they tell you to do. Yes, we're out there putting up signs. Yes, we're out there putting up flyers. Yes, we are searching. Chris, I'm sorry. Did you just say you guys are getting death threats? Yes, we've been getting death threats. And they have been reported to the TBI. Everything gets forwarded, screenshot, and sent straight, straight to them. So why, when law enforcement did that presser on the TBI for the news release, they, that they received no information about any death threats? Right? Now, we know Seth had reported it. We know his searches had reported it. So, was Chris just jumping on the bandwagon? Possibly. Perhaps not. Perhaps there was getting a few death threats. But it wasn't from any one of the YouTubers or TikTokers or Instagram people. It was from poor people around there who don't agree that they are behaving. Black. Wow, okay. Okay, everyone, I have Seth on my phone, on my JBL speaker. Uh, Seth, I want to give you a chance to talk uninterrupted, so please, go ahead. All right. Uh, mainly... Chris, the communication needs to be a little bit more prompt. Um, uh, if I send you an email on Monday and Tuesday, uh, I'm not I'm not willing to wait a week to get a response back. I mean, that's unacceptable when we're trying to find Sebastian, buddy. I understand what you're saying. 
I'll respect that. But when it comes to you asking people to come into my house on my property, who I don't know Adam from Eden, and I really don't care what certification, who can vouch for these people, I don't care. I'm going to do exactly what I have always been doing. You send that to me, okay, well, we're going to review it, and then we're going to send it to we'll interrupt you, Chris. What did you ask for? Come on, Chris. Why did you ask? If you don't care about their credentials. Hmm? It'll be in this bit here, along this part. Let law enforcement go that route, and then law enforcement comes in. Hold on. Oh, oh, Chris, hold on one second. Hold on. Seth, what did you say? I said the person to be our spokesman to speak for all three of us doesn't need to be on your property. Okay, but good. Yeah, correct. You, have spoken you are very correct. I have spoken to him. When? And I'm going to make this make public. I am back working, and I have work hours. I also have to sleep, and unfortunately, oh. I'm on. Oh, he's Andy, how do you know for a fact the other week, last week, when another YouTuber had a phone in, right? And before this woman had phoned in, she's an elderly woman, and she was saying how she, she says she saw Sebastian. Where it was, right? But a uh, grandson holding up to phone law enforcement, probably because I didn't, probably because I probably, you know, what she's probably just seen on a YouTube channel, you know what I mean? She was 78 years old, so my memory isn't great, and I'm 58. I'll be like when I'm 78. Nothing after that. He has a go about that woman not phoning law enforcement or that. She didn't do it. She's seventy eight years old and she listen she goes by as she said, she's in her second childhood. Well, she's in her second That means she don't remember flip all. She doesn't. She doesn't remember half the things she used to remember. Right, so and I found know this, and that's why I said don't phone law enforcement because we don't know if you remember. I'm sorry, it's just a dream or a memory or something you've seen on TV. You know what I mean? So that's why she didn't remember. But he then says, I've been at work all night. I've come home, sleep, then I wake up, woke up, it's the first chapter, and that's when I saw the lady talking, I thought, hold on, hold on, so you work all night, there it goes, you come home, you go to sleep, don't know how long for, some people might have four, some people might have six, some people might have eight. Hours. I'm looking if I get three. Right. And I'd love to know what it's like to get sleep. I'd love to know what it's like just to get four hours sleep. Anyway, I digress. He then wakes up and the first thing he does is Logging out, getting the credentials off this dark angle, emailing, emailing Steph back. It will take minutes to email back and just say, We're looking into it, we're waiting on hearing off the dark anglers. 
I take back up my whatever, whatever his name is. You know what I mean? That's all he had to do. But he didn't. I it over a week. And I've got the email. Oh, yeah. We've got the email. And I'm going to show you that. But I want you to get through this bit first. Okay. On the opposite schedule of you. So respect that. I will do what I can, as I can, him, when I can. I'm sorry, Seth, go ahead. When did you speak with him, Chris? What has that got to do with finding Sebastian? If he's a mere spokesperson, I was just asking when you spoke with him. I haven't come up with an answer yet. We spoke with him. We told him we'll get back with him <laughs> after we've done some consideration and talk with law enforcement. Oh, he had, he wasn't expecting that question, was it? When did you speak to him? He gave it away. By saying, oh, I haven't come up with an answer. <laughs> How long do you need to come up with an answer to when did you speak to him? How long do you need to know to give? I haven't come up with an answer to that. Uh, does that mean you haven't spoke to him? Or have you not found a date as to when you spoke to him? We'll get back to him and we'll let him know our, our decision. So, um, I, think I know you're on board with that. I do. I mean, I know you're a thousand percent on board with Mr. Mathis. I got that. I'm not taking that away from you. So, Chris, um, I understand like every marriage is different and um, husband wife aspect. Um, you, you seem very protective of Katie and um, her having conversations with or without you. Um, but I, like I said before you came on, I do believe that Katie is the one who and I'm not saying it's because she knows what happened to Sebastian, but she was the last person that was with him. And so she does hold the most information, at least up until the point that he went missing. What information um, do you think she holds? Well, I'm going to get to that. Well, then do me a favor. Let's just get to it. Okay. Um, Don't so, pour gravy on the mashed potatoes. Just serve the stuff up. Chris, I'm, I'm really trying to be respectful. And this is a very... I, I am too. So please just get to it. Okay. No, so we would really love to hear from Katie about his body language that day. Um, have you noticed um, Seth says something? Um, not Seth. Is it Steph? The the ever private investigator. Chloe. Every time she sees have you noticed how he because she's hitting No, David, CP never answers. I wish he would. I wish he would. But he never does. But he doesn't like... You know, we've heard from others who are, are, you know, not necessarily good sources about his body language at the bowling alley and his body language here and there. And so we're just really trying to pick up on Sebastian's mood because it could help us understand what led to him walking away off the front porch out the front door. We know why he walked away. If he ever did walk away. If. Hmm. Well, we'll say about that. that. Something that if she decides to answer, that's on her. But what I know is even on video, Sebastian was having a great day. He was in a great mood. He got to go to BJ's. He had a colossal popcorn. He hung out with family. It. That's he it. went and played. Hold on. I'll go back. Just there. I'll start there. Listen to what how Chris has been doing. You send that to me. Okay, well, we're going to review it, and then we're going to send it to law enforcement. Chris. Let law enforcement go that route, and then when law enforcement comes in for us, it doesn't need to be on your property. Hold, hold on. Says, <laughs> oh, oh, Chris, hold on one second. Hold on. Seth, what did you say? I said the person to be our spokesman to speak for all three of us doesn't need to be on your property. Okay, but good. Yes, you have spoken you very correct. to him. I have spoken to him. When? And I'm going to make this public. 
I am back working and I have work hours. I also have to sleep. And unfortunately, I'm on the opposite schedule of you. Be respectful. And this is a very. I, mean, I am too. So please just get to it. Okay. No, so you're, you're we would up. really love to hear from Katie about his body language that day. Um, you know, we've heard, heard from others who are, are, you know, not necessarily good sources about his body language at the bowling alley and his body language here and there. And so we're just really trying to pick up on Sebastian's mood because it could help us understand what led to him walking away off the front porch out the front door. Well, that is something that if she decides to answer, that's on her. But what I know is even on video, Sebastian was having a great day. He was in a great mood. He got to go to beat. He got to go. He got to go to BJ. This BJ's, he had a colossal popcorn. He hung out with family. You asking people to come into my house. I am back working. So she does hold the most information, at least up until the point that he went missing. What information um, do you think she holds? Well, I'm going to get to that. Well, then do me a favor. Let's just get to it. Okay. Um, Don't so, pour gravy on the mashed potatoes. Just serve the stuff up. Chris, I'm, I'm really trying to be respectful. And this is a very... I, mean, I am too. So please just get to it. Okay. No, so you're, you're we would up. really love to hear from Katie about his body language that day. Um, you know, we've heard from others who are, are, you know, not necessarily good sources about his body language at the bowling alley and his body language here and there. And so we're just really trying to pick up on Sebastian's mood because it could help us understand what led to him walking away off the front porch out the front door. Listen again. He'll say it again. Well, that is something that if she decides to answer, that's on her. But what I know is even on video, Sebastian was having a great day. He was in a great mood. He got to go to BJ's. He had a colossal popcorn. He hung out with family. He went and played video. Right. He got to go. He got to go. Popcorn. He got to go. Does that mean um, he, he got She let him go BJ. Does that mean that? He got to go. Where would he, what would have happened if he hadn't gone? Would he have been left at home on his own? He's 15. Could you have done that? They say he can be left alone for two hours or so money. You know what I mean? On his own. He's quite capable of looking after himself for a few hours. The fact that he said, he got to go to be. Hmm. Okay. Video games at, at uh, Strike and Spare. After that, he went and had dinner at Roadhouse, Texas Roadhouse. He ate his whole meal. Yes, David. The question was, what was Seb's mood? Not what he did. So. Okay, we all know he went, he got to go to BJ and he had a colossal popcorn. But what mood was he in? Like, I know from my grandson, right, both my grandsons, one's on the spectrum and one's just wait to be assessed, you know. And the one I have every fortnight, Sometimes during the holiday, I have him for a thing odd, maybe, if he's on holiday and whatever. It's his favorite thing is not going to the shop, not going shopping. I will not take him to the shops unless I have to. Like tomorrow, I've got him here, right? So tomorrow, if it's nice, like it's been today, and it's been a scorcher here today. So if it's not like it was the guy, then he likes to he likes to go to this very big park across the road from me. It's a ten minute walk, if that. And it's massive. There's a play area, there's woods, a forest to walk through. 
a wanted bridge that leads to a cemetery and there's other parts of the park as far as you can go where you can kick a ball around, do whatever, just go crazy. He loves going there. And when he goes, he likes to take what he calls his picnic. So I have to do some sandwiches, make sure I've got some biscuits for him, and I don't know, maybe some fruit. Whether he eats the fruit is another thing. Right? So that's what I, I will be doing tomorrow if the weather's nice. I'm hoping it's nice because I'd like to get him out. And so he's not taken to the shop. Like on the way back, I might say, oh, we'll just pop into Farm Foods or we'll pop, just pop into here and you'll be okay with it. Right? But taking him around the main shops, like shopping arcades, see, shopping centres, no, he does not like it. And neither does my other grandson. So when he comes to visit and we go into town with his mum, after about half an hour, I say, you know what, I'll go and sit outside with him. Let him run about while you go to your shops where you want to go. And I'll go and sit with him outside. Because there's not one for shops. It's really not. So getting him to go to the shop is, oh God, do we have to? I don't want to go to the shop. I don't want to do this. I don't want to go there. Right? Now, it is quite clear. I said to him, Dad, because his mum phoned, I phoned his mum because I had a message. And she said, you can still have Olivia tomorrow if you want. Because I was planning to have Olivia, his sister, tomorrow. Tomorrow night. So I said to, to Ellis, I said, Ellis, do you want Olivia to come stay, stay the night tomorrow? He said, no. Nor my mum. I don't want my mum either, either. So, because he's got in his mindset then, he was, he's, he's a my time, like granny. He's tied with granny. You know what I mean? And he loves that one-on-one -on -one attention. So, I don't like to go, I don't, so I sent my to Mr. George and I was saying, you know, what, I'll have her next time. Next time I have Ellis, I'll have Olivia. Right. So and what I might do, I might have a, if it's okay with mum. I don't think she's listening in tonight. She might be, she might not be. I might have her for the whole weekend. We'll see. See what the weather is like, see how well. She's very fussy. Normally she's okay with one night. Two nights, but if I have her on a Friday night, by Saturday night, she wants to go home. So I might just have a full of one night. We'll see. But getting Ellis to go to the shops is unbelievable. So perhaps he didn't want to go out. Perhaps he wanted to stay at home and play his Minecraft games. You know what I mean? So he may not be been in a good mood. And you can tell, like, by the way they walk, by the way they hold the body, the head, the way they acknowledge people, whether he's talking, is he talking, is he not talking. You know what I mean? That's what we need to know. I got a change. David, according to CP, this home has three doors in which two doors were locked with key required to unlock from the inside and outside. The only door which could be opened from the inside is the front door. Hmm. Now, me personally, I wouldn't, if I had that sort of lock, the key code, right, lock, I'd also have a dead bolt on it as well. I really would. I'd really have a dead bolt on my door. Even some chains. Door, some door chains, right? So, three doors, so two doors because that's the there is a door, you know, where the garages are, there's a door there, just to find where she parks the bank, you can see a door, so that's one door that comes from the garage. Is that locked? We don't know. It'd be a bit stupid if it wasn't because 
that means they can still get into your house, right? So the other door that would be locked would be the door to the garage. But how many people actually lock that inside door to the garage, from the house to the garage? I don't know because I've never, everyone I've known who's had a garage, right? They don't, in the UK, a lot of them, they don't go from the garage to the house. You have to come out of the garage and then walk around to your front. Some do have it set so they can have a door from the garage. Some do. But to be honest with you, I wouldn't have that door locked. I'd have the outer door locked, the one that leads from outside. That one I would have locked, but the inner door I wouldn't have locked. Um, what's the other door that would be locked? Would that be the door to the balcony? Front door key code is not required to open from the inside. So this only leaves the front door and garage door. As I said, would it not make sense? More sense to lock that door. By, you know that smaller door they've got by the garage? Doors. Would it not make more sense to have that door locked? I'd rather have that door locked. That door would be locked at all times. It wouldn't even be open. I wouldn't have it open because you'd go out the garage doors, wouldn't you? Yeah, and there's no, no video of anybody going out the door. No, David, no. Out that front door. But I can't understand. It's the bedroom lights. Bear with me now. Listen to this. Apparently, from what I understand the other day, the bedroom lights kept going on and off. Now, I first heard that the bedroom lights went on, it's turned on, then turned off. Then the other day I heard that the bedroom, Sebastian's bedroom lights kept going on and off, on and off, for like 15 minutes. Right, so... Yeah, the front door is self-locking. You know, it's not that intelligent. You know what I mean? And has anyone heard about uh, Candice? Candice Wells. She's giving Chris advice. <laughs> actually, it's good advice. It's actually good advice she's giving him. You know what I mean? And it's about that, I think it's about that phone call, that late phone call. And she's saying, oh, I can't remember what she's saying, but she's saying, the foul, uh, the use of words, you, the words you are using will get you nowhere. You know what I mean? And I'm thinking, you know what, Candice, you're actually giving a bit of a good advice there, but should you not told that to your husband when your child went missing? Because your husband is doing dig the same as what this tow bag is doing. You know what I mean? And please, Candice, tell us as well her, why you won't let no one go up on your property and search your property. Yeah. And... Um, so if he went out that garage door, not the garage door, not the big door, but that little door, he could have possibly walked away. But you know what? I don't think he did. I don't think he did. Right? It's like... You know law enforcement, their dog, the first day, tracked up to the construction retention pond and the construction site, yes? And when 
stay. Went with her husband, who's law enforcement, went by private plane, took her full bloodhound, private plane, to Tennessee. They used an item of clothing from law enforcement, I believe, and the dogs were tracking the scent. Even after all this time, the dogs picked up on the scent. Right? So, I don't think he walked out, David. I really don't. I don't. Anyway, they was picking up on his scent, but not going the way law enforcement do dogs went. Where they went, you know when you come out of their road, if you take a left, it takes you up to the opening where the construction site is. Well, her dogs went the other way. And it was when Chris noticed that her dogs had gone another way, that's when he put a stop to it. She hadn't even been on his property. She was nowhere near his house. Her dogs were leading away from where the law enforcement dogs went. So, were the dogs, which I don't understand is, like the dogs led, law enforcement dogs led from the house round to the bottom of the road, up that other road, Kelly, Kelly, Kelly Road, right up to the top, across to the retention pond, and then the construction site. Right? Now, which way did her dogs lead? Were her dogs leading up the road, away from his house, up the road, or did they lead down the road and then take a right down towards the main road? And when Chris noticed that her dogs were going a different way, that's when he said, no, you can't be here, you've got no right to be here. She had every right to be there. She was cleared by law enforcement and TBR. She was cleared. She got, they had, she was given the right away. Right? Yes, she did have to get permission to go on his property. She wasn't on his property. So what in heaven's earth does Chris think he is? Does Chris think he is by telling someone they can't be where they are. Hold on. Hold on, I'm just going to mute. I'm back. Sorry about that. Whew. So, I don't even think he was carried out the damage door. Right? Because people are saying if she had him in the car, 
right? Would the dogs not have picked up on his scent? Hold on. So uh, my grandson wants to sit in the living room, but he has his tablet very hard. And I'm trying to get him to go in the bedroom, and he won't go in the bedroom. So I tried bribing him. He wasn't having it. Right. So if you hear some music in the background or some talking, it's my grandson on his tablet, and I'm really, really sorry. But this is the problems you have with a child. Who is tired, but it's too, it's too over. It's like I think he's a bit over stimulated today with the heat, with the heat and everything, and the fact that we went to the park after school and then we've come home and then gone back to his, I mean, and then from his, we've caught the bus to get to mine. It's a, a lot for him. You know what I mean? Normally, I pick him up straight from school and bring him straight to mine. But you know, because I was waiting for his mum and dad to come home, I decided to take him to the park for a little bit. Anyway, my own fault. In my opinion, the key is held between 2.30am and 4.30. I'm assuming that Seb made it home Sunday evening. Why 2.30am? And 4.30 a.m. because of those lights. Mine. So. I don't, you know, I'm still looking and arguing about that. Did he come home that night? You know what I mean? It, it, the fact that... Oh, the number three keeps coming to my head. On the Sunday, they went to three places. BJ's, Holding, Dinger. Right? What's the other three? I think it's... Uh, because when people are, they tend to stick to a certain number, right? And when that number keeps coming up in conversation, like, oh, the three-hour phone call, and it's three hours away from home, or three and a half hours away from home to work, three again, and things like that. And the fact that uh, Chris said it's three hours, 30 something minutes. Now, me personally, I'd say oh, it's three and a half hours. Right? But no, Chris doesn't. So, anyway, I want to get up to that point. 
And we are getting there. Believe me, we are getting there. I mean, it. I mean, everything in the video, even the videos that Seth has seen, he doesn't show any negative signs of he's upset or anything like that. As far as we all know, Seth, Sebastian had a great day. No, I mean, it sounds like a really great day. I mean, they did a lot. Um, I was just curious and, um, like I said, I mean, every relationship is different and you're protective of Katie and who she communicates without you. Um, hey, Katie, I think that has, has been a record. Difficult. Um, but right. Hold on a second. But for the record, Katie can speak when she so chooses yep. and she's done interviews without. No, I'm not talking about interviews, but she spoke without me. Okay. That Chris said about Sebastian going to live with Seth. And, and Chris, you may ask, what does this have to do with Sebastian missing? It's all part of the narrative. It could mean he ran away. And that is, Chris, did you not say that he was not looking forward to going to live with his father? Yes, I did say that. Seth, did you know this? Nope. Uh, Chris, do you want to elaborate? Yeah, I'll tell you why. Yes, okay. ma'am. Yes, ma I will. Glad. I'm glad to elaborate. Hold on, Chris. Hold on. I'm sorry, Seth. Start over. Start over. And then, Chris, it'll, we'll go to you. Seth, go ahead. But I know why I was putting him in online school. He needed a, he needed a therapy to actually have been started with ABA, so on and so forth, before I put him back into the situation. Because he's not ready for certain things. Okay. So he was so going to go. I'm not going to set my son up for failure. I want my son to succeed. He was going to homeschool until he was ready to go back to regular school. Is that what you're saying? Correct. And it's not really homeschool. I mean, it's it's just online school. Okay. Online. Right. Online school. That's a better term. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said homeschool. School. Right. Online yeah. school. Totally different. Really quick, Chris. Um, the day that they had on Sunday with the. Uh, spaghetti pancakes and bragging to family and BJ's and Texas Roadhouse and bowling and all of these, like, it sounds like the best day ever. Was that like a normal weekend for them? Or was it like, I just, I don't know. Was that like their normal weekend? Right. Well, do me a favor. Let's, let's pause that question because you just diverted away from what she asked and let's clear this out. Okay. okay. Go ahead. We want the facts. Let's get the facts straight. Okay. So yes, I did tell you Sebastian was not excited about going to his father's house because online school, Online Seth school. was aware of this because Seth stood in my house with me, Katie, and Sebastian in my kitchen and had this conversation where Seth asked his son about, you don't want to go to online school? And Sebastian's retort was, no, I don't. But okay. I don't really care about playing tit for tat. I understand that this may be a reason why he wanted to run away, so to speak, if that's the case. Right. But we're not no, going wasn't. into this. We're not going to play this tit for tat. Yeah. On social media, we're not doing this. Okay, uh, Seth, go ahead. Chris, unbeknownst to you, had already talked about this action. You knew this wouldn't be a permanent thing, and me and him had already spoken. Well, that's the, that. Right there's a the conversation, conversation you should have had with Katie and myself about what your plans were. I'm sorry. Do you want to say that one more time? I'm sorry. What Seth was saying is that if I had known the conversation that him and Sebastian had. That I would know the whole thing, but the downside is that that's where Seth should have had that same conversation with me and Katie, and that didn't happen. But this goes right back to here's the thing: if, if you're saying that because he didn't want to go live with his dad, he potentially ran away, is that a possibility? Sure, we'll put that out there. Okay. But quite honestly, what goes on between Seth, me, his mom, and our household is none of the public's business. If it had something to do with his disappearance, I would understand that, but it doesn't. Well, we don't know that. Well, I understand it. That's why we're making this clear. And that's right. why I asked about his day because Let's I didn't go back know. To the day. Okay, go I ahead. No, okay. So, Chris, you don't know me very well. Um, I have two decades of experience working with autistic children um, in, in different capacities. So, I, I do understand they are all different. Um, I do understand that that day may have been very overstimulating for him. So that's why I was asking if that was a normal day for him. And if it wasn't that, I mean, that just gives me more information that maybe he was very overstimulated that day. Chris. So, all right, so one more time. I'm so sorry. 
I was, I was just saying, um, in my experience with autistic children, obviously they're all different. Um, but if this was not a normal day for Sebastian on Sunday, when he went and did all, all of these things, and it sounds like he was gone from home for a while. Um, if this wasn't a normal day for him, would this have been an overstimulating day for him? Mm. Is this something normal? Does he normally go to BJ's and bowling and all of these things on a weekend? Or was this kind of like a special thing? And if it was a special thing, what was what caused it to be special? Was there an occasion? Uh, if it was a special thing, a mother and a son bonding and just having a good time. I'm not I'm not being ugly at all. I'm, I'm not. I'm not. I'm just I'm uh, making I mean, is this a normal day for them on a weekend? It very, for them to do our all days, things. our days fluctuate. Monday through Friday, we're a working family, just like everybody else out there. And when the weekend comes, that's when you get a lot of stuff done. You go a lot of places, you do a lot of things. Hi, Eddie. And a lot of times, that's where, you know, you go and spend time with your kids and do extra things. Sebastian's not in sports like most kids. So we don't spend ball time at, uh, at the ballpark. You know, when Seth has Sebastian on the weekends, he goes and does fishing and things like that with Sebastian just as well. I mean, it's Seth works long that, hours, that, I work long hours. And I'm not I mean, saying any of that is gotta, suspicious at all, Chris. I'm just asking if that was normal. Because if it wasn't normal and he was overstimulated, that could be a reason for him to have ran out of the house. No, okay. he was not overstimulated. Okay, so that wasn't one of the possible reasons for him to leave. Here's, here's what I'll say. Everything is on the table. Nothing has been taken off the table, period. That's the same statement law enforcement has made. That's the same statement I'm going to tell you no, every single day. Yeah. 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 Gave my son to your mother and father. I'm sorry, I shouldn't say that. Say it one more time. Well, we can move on. So no, no, no. I want to hear it. There's a rumor out there, Chris. Yeah. What? Yeah, I said you said. Excuse me, I suggest let's carry on. Right? And, uh, but no, Chris wanted to hear what he had to say. And this is where he does not like this. He does not like this. That's your mom and your dad. How's Sebastian? It's been brought up to me. Seth, you know darn good well. You got a question about my I'm brother. just asking. You pick up the phone. Like a boot camp or anything like that. And Katie just thought I wouldn't accept it. I don't think, I don't think Seth on. is being accusatory. I think he's just trying uh, to clear up a bunch of BS that's been online. online. Right. And I'm trying, and I'm, I'm telling you. If he's had this suspicion, he's got my mother's phone number. He can pick up. He's not afraid to no, answer this. I'm not saying you. I don't want to talk to your mom. I want to talk to you, and I want to talk to Katie. Well, it's real I'm simple, Seth. To put it to the rest. You have seen the video footage of I Seth haven't. on Sunday. Don't tell me that. I know you have. You're sitting in the room no, with haven't. all the agents. No, they didn't show me the video footage, buddy. So you didn't see you. You weren't sitting in a room with law enforcement, the district attorney, when they showed you a video when you wanted proof of life, saying district, what's the district attorney being there? For? Hold on. And um, a district attorney be there facing a criminal case. He wouldn't be there, or she wouldn't be there. They would not be there if it was an investigation. You hadn't seen proof since Friday. That when you've been at my house the first three damn days. Sunday, buddy. Chris, let Chris, let Seth speak. Go ahead, Seth. Chris, they showed me video proof of me coming out of Texas Roadhouse on Sunday. On a Sunday. Sunday night. You're damn right. Just Chris. Seth, I got a problem with you sitting here making these accusations. Because if you've got a problem with them, guess what? I think we're just trying to talk things out, and I don't even know if this should be public, honestly. Same. Okay, here's all the public knowledge you need on this deal. Law enforcement has talked to my parents, my whole family. Once again, this 
statement is true, what law enforcement says. Just because you hear a rumor doesn't make it true. I'm, I, I don't think he said it was true. I think he's just trying to clarify. He's That's not true. clarifying. No, stop. No, stop sitting here trying to defend his actions. Stop. Okay. The fact he, is, Chris, is I'm trying to squash the rumor. We're still here. Squash. See? Seth is trying to squash that rumor. Right? But Chris is not having none of that. I believe that video said taking out the trash, which is, I believe that video said taking out the trash, which is inconclusive. Well, Seth said he couldn't tell. It was too dark. All he had was like a little put, a pocket torch. Right? But law enforcement are saying, they can tell it's Sebastian by the way he skipped and walked or ran up the driveway. Hold on. You can see all that, but Seth couldn't. Yeah, exactly. Because not only that, I think because of the way CP reacts to anything to do with his family, it's a no-go area, which I understand, right? Family should not be brought into this. But when you've heard that last interview where, and it's mentioned here, it's mentioned here about how people saw CP's mother's car Parked up by the uh, store opposite the school, right? And um, it's not just a rumor on the internet, as she says. The PI says it's not just a rumor on the internet. People have actually come up to her in public and told her, right? So could that, that because it's the two cars are very similar because CP's car, uh, Katie's car and Kathy Barasoff's car is similar, same colour, same make, everything. It could be Katie the saw and not Kathy. But then I don't know, they didn't say they seen two cars, they just saw they, they saw one car. And it was Kathy Barrasock's car. So unless they saw Kathy in the car, which obviously they must have done if they're saying it was her car. Right? It just it doesn't make sense. But in the interview, the neighbor said, you know, some of that I'll take with a pinch of salt. I, I listen to it, I think about it, and then what I don't want to keep, I let go. I let it go. Go straight out the other ear. What I do believe is she was only gone 10 minutes. Now, if you map it, as soon as I heard that she was only gone 10 minutes searching for her son, I thought, hold on. That's the same time it would take to get up to the school, drive up to the school itself, into the school grounds maybe, Steve is hanging around by the school, uh, drive back out the school, go up towards that store, right, park up, as someone mentioned next to that store, is a beach storage unit. Could storage units. Has anyone asked? has anyone checked those units? Who they've been looking to? Who owns those units? Whatever. Plus by the store there are some big like dustbins. Those you know those big ones that hold a hell of a lot of rubbish. Right? 
Would that be go to would those bins when empty go to the general refuge? Which I believe is in Galatin or somewhere like that, or would it be took to Kentucky? Kentucky landfill is for construction work like rubble and all that lot. Okay. So why did they search Kentucky landfill? Well, we all know now that the general rubbish is took to another land landfill. Not Kentucky, it's took to another landfill. And one of those landfills, the buildings there, was set on fire a few weeks back. Hmm? Yep. Bit coincidental, that. Hi, see Selena. Selena Dixon. Hi there. It's good to have you in here. But he doesn't like losing control. He really doesn't. He doesn't. And that's why CP, he does all the talking because he has to have control. Right? And that's why he makes all the decisions because he has control. And that's why he will not team up with that uh, guy that Seth has brought in. Right? He won't team up with him because he won't have control of the narrative. He won't. Because everything will go through that guy then. Right? And that Mike or whatever his name is will say, no, we don't need to bring that into, into it. We don't need to discuss that. Uh, let's go here. Let's try doing this way and whatever. Because we've seen how this, we, I can understand, understand Seth needing someone else to come in and take over a bit, take some of the pressure off him. Seth is not one for the interviewing. He's not. He don't mind going on the old YouTube channel and talking and talking about Sebastian. Right? But he's not one for sitting there and having questions fired at him. He's not. You can see he's not comfortable with that. So I can understand why he brought this guy in. I really do. But this guy's got a hell of a job on his hands, bringing them up together. He really has. So that's my grandson. He's just gone back to the bedroom. Oh, God, come on. Do you do this to me? Seth, there is no rumor. You know my parents were not with Katie on Sunday. Oh, I'm doing, Chris. No, you're causing a problem because you know damn good and well where my parents were at their house on Sunday night. They weren't near Katie. They weren't near Sebastian. And if you've got a problem, all you've got to do is pick up the phone and call her. Be an adult. Be a responsible adult. And just call her. Chris. Can you hear me, Chris? Oh, I can hear you. Because all I'm hearing is anger and attitude from you. What I'm saying you should, you Seth. You, you should. Because, because what you're doing is bullshit, and you know it. Okay, stop. Okay, People are talking over each other. I know. Uh, Seth, go, and then Chris, go. Please, Seth, and then Chris. Thank you. Chris, a unified front squashes rumors together. That's all I am stating. Okay, Chris. This is a rumor floating around, and I would like us, us to squash it. Yeah, I think that is a great rumor to try to squash. That one's on Facebook, and the rumor is actually that um, about uh, your mom, her car being parked at like Borsham's and him getting. Okay, so here's here's the answer. The final answer to this. It's not just an it's online rumor squash. because people have driven up to me and personally spoken oh, yeah. about this. Okay, right. ladies and gentlemen, can I make the statement? I wish this is right. very simple. This conversation has nothing to do on social media. You want to have this conversation, Seth? You call me, you get Heather, you get Chloe on the phone. That's Hell, right. I'll do you one better, and right. I will get Bobby and Carter on the phone, and we'll all sit down and have this little fucking powwow. 
we're not going to have a powwow like that. But I well, then guess what? The situation, and I would love for it to be private because I believe a lot of what is happening right now should not be public. I so explain to me why you don't want Bobby and Carter involved. I, I didn't say I didn't want Bobby and Carter involved. I yeah. said I, I was referring to your tone, which is very angry. Oh, I'm very pissed. I, I know that. Um, I think we just all need to take a breath because no one is accusing anyone of anything. We are trying to dispel oh, things. Is a turn, dispelling these things will take so some shit. of the BS off of you. Wow. That was uncalled for. I, I and Chris, I, I mean, I do understand your anger, but I know these ladies. I don't know Seth. I just know what I've seen. But these ladies are not full of shit. I didn't say they're full of shit. I was referring to Seth full of shit with his comments. Well, that doesn't help. No, it doesn't. So when you brought him on the show and he wants to start this shit, that isn't going to answer the question. It's going to spiral into the shit that's in. So we can set this shit aside and answer the questions that you got. Okay. I would like to move on very quickly, but I will say the public opinion is not going to improve unless we can take a deep Exactly right. And, and I know you are frustrated. You have no I'm idea not, what I'm not I am. saying I know how but this is not helping. If it's not helping, then you shouldn't be talking about it on social media. But here, as a PI, you should have said, you know what, we're not going to answer that question. We're going to do that privately. That's. I'll hold on. And this woman up now. She said, right, let's move on from that and tell me hear what he's got to, to say. All this wants is to work together. But not gonna and for them to squash, to put a Blind uh, water over these rumors because the rumors are not how this case. Well, that I, I did went. say that actually several times. Yeah. Can listen to that recording later. So let's move on to the next question. I just got to say one thing. You want the public's help. You want them to be behind both of you. And to find Sebastian. Exactly. And I that's a it's a very good chance that somebody in the public and, and will find that's him. my biggest frustration is that I, we all collectively have to deal with all of this. Right. I love your comments, Sonny Peterson. David, he has not answered as of yet. Leslie, good to see you. I knew Sonny Peterson. This is just my thinking. Seb is three hours from the house, as that's how long the call was, allegedly. Yeah, that three hour phone call is a bit sus in my mind. As I put on a comment once, right, my husband no longer with us. All right. Anyway. If we had a phone conversation, it went something like, yep, okay, see you later. Phone hung up, right? That's if we ever spoke on the phone. Because after time, he wouldn't answer my phone calls. Right? All messages. And so I just gave up trying to message him. Because I thought I might as well wait for him to come home and tell him or ask him to go back out to the shop again and get a jug of milk. And things like that. Because they'll come in and go, oh, I didn't see my messages. Yeah, right. But you can go back out now and get the milk. Right? So, and sometimes it wasn't as polite as that. Believe me. Anyway. Own the guilty wrong and not search for their missing child. Yep, Sonny, that is correct. They're not looking 
because in their eyes, he's not missing. Uh, that question again. It doesn't answer any questions. If you notice, it'll say, someone will ask him a question. He'll go, let's get this crystal clear. And he'll go all the way around it. But he won't answer the question. He will not answer the question. Did you notice when you saw uh, Nancy Grace, that first interview they did? They haven't done it for one with her. It was, yes ma'am, no ma'am, yes ma'am. Oh, was she talking to me? I'm sorry, yes ma'am. I sat there and I was thinking, oh my God, give me a bucket, I want to be sick. You know what I mean? This is not the Chris we know. And we knew he wouldn't, I knew, but well, I knew he wouldn't be um, Nancy, because Nancy will just tore into him. She will get tore into, like that time when she said to, about the bout incident, and Katie stepped in and went to answer it. She went, for Chris Proudful, for Chris Proudful, and she said it three times. She was not having Katie answer that question. She wanted Chris to answer it. No, so I thought she'd nowhere be near that guy. Oh, and something else I heard today, and it makes a lot of sense. Guy? Hi, new chat I am, new here. Well, hello, Shavona, or Shavon. Good to see you. You can't believe anything he says. No, you can't. Hi there, Leslie. He's getting angry and angry at taking the onus away from KP. Exactly. As I said, I've watched this thing. I think this is the third time now I'm watching it. And I picked up on certain things. But what was it today I heard? Oh, God. Someone in the chat said it. Made me think about it. Uh, oh, it'll come back to me. It'll come back to me. So I'm gonna, I'm, I forgot exactly what I was going to say then, but we'll continue. Because there's still a bit I want to get to. I thought we would Instead of focusing on, on Sebastian. Right. And it's it's a disadvantage to Sebastian. Um, really, it's sad because we're not any closer to finding him as long as we're all arguing like those. Yeah. Uh, in mods and chat, uh, you're removing these comments, I hope, because I've been removing some too. And we've got extra people, extra mods and chat. Uh, anything rude that said, they're they're banned, they're gone. Okay. So we'll get them out there as, as quickly as possible. And let me go through chat really quickly here to get some, uh, some more questions here. You've been on here for many hours and I so appreciate this. I really, really do. So- Can you first hear me? Yes, you can. In, in and you, well, you can't throw us in a back room so we can talk real quick. I, I wish I could. I wish I had that ability, but I don't. I can take you both off and you can call him. Do you no, want to let's finish, let's finish this first and we'll do that after the fact. Let's get these questions out of the way. Yes. Listen, you may not like my opinion, but when we got rumors out there, if when you and I squash these rumors, then they stop being rumors and everybody just looks at the people who are spreading them like they are shit. I was not trying to upset you. Exactly. I'm trying to squash the stupid rumors that are literally filling up my privatized email address, their inbox with crap. So it's just crap. It's not helping find Sebastian. So if it gets squashed, then people will stop. Not everybody. Lord knows there's still going to stupid people out there, but it will stop. It will, I mean, literally, it will stop. My report is the only thing I'm to find Sebastian, Chris, and there are rumors out there that we have to put an end to. You may not like them, but we have to put them into them publicly because right here, we can end rumors. So people know when I told them to fuck off, they didn't like it. 
they, they know that I meant fuck off because they don't like me. So stop right there, Seth. Stop. Let me help you with something real quick. You want rumors to die? You want to stop with all the stuff that's coming up and flood, flood these PIs inbox? How many terabytes do you want of videos where you have gone out there and you've said some very harsh things that should never have come out? You never should have. And now don't take this the wrong way. That is a conversation for me. Let me finish. Things that I put out there. Once again, you can't talk to a fucking log. Okay, what? Okay, Chris, so let me productive. finish. Chris, that's not productive. It's not. So let me finish. You all are playing one sided here. Hi. He's getting so angry. So angry. Right? We're not being rude. We are keeping it real. The only crap is what's coming out of Chris's carrots. Gosh, it's what's up. Oh, God. Sonny, you're, you're going to have me cracking up in a minute. Really? Well, if it gets fake, well, I'll tell you something, Celine. I lost faith. Well, I'm not from the USA. I'm from the UK. But I lost faith in the, jurors, uh, in the judges in one state where the father has just been sentenced to 45, 45 plus 45 to life and plus other charges on top of all that, right? He's never getting out. Now, if the judge in the child case, child custody case, for the mother had stepped up and said, Hold on, we haven't had all the reports come back yet from the home physics. He hasn't done this, he hasn't done that, right? Where the mother jumped through every hoop she was told to do. She did it all, right? He done nothing. The father did none of that. I've seen the report. I've got it on my tab laptop, right? And the judge... Because her attorney didn't step up, child services didn't say, oh, on, we can't do this because we haven't got all the full reports back. But they didn't step up. The judge then, in his ignorance, should have known, oh, done, has this, this case, has, the father hasn't done this and the father hasn't done that. We need to hold off on this until we get all the reports back. But the judge didn't. And the judge went and handed him custody of his daughter. And he got her in 2019 in, I think it's the, well, he hadn't got, he hadn't, he wasn't, she wasn't with the father long before he killed her. You know what I mean? So the attorney, the child services, the judge, all left that little girl down. So, Seth and everyone else, Chris has threatened, needs to get together, press charges, and have Chris locked up. If he's in the poke, he's out there to cause trouble to get the focus off Sebastian. Jenny agree. Right, well, see, the thing is, it's not just Chris. It's not just Chris. It's his family. As I said, he's got family. He's got friends. You know what I mean? So even if they lock him up, he's still got his family and friends to go out and cause havoc. So locking him up won't help. Well, make, well, make us feel a lot happier. But... It won't stop the harassment and the threats and all that. I think law enforcement, I think TPI should hand this over to FBI because this is getting out of control. If the TPI is listening to any of these videos, please hand it over to FBI. 
วิ่งเยอะทีปีออยตั้งอ่ะเดี๋ยววิ่งคอมพลีคายจิคายสิอยู่พื้นนะวิสเตอร์แมทมือยู่ชอว่าอยู่แสกแดงจากวิสเตอร์คอมพลีคายจิคายอันยูเงาะฟังเธอ this is a complicated case and you will not find Sebastian if anyone finds Sebastian it's going to be someone from the public walking their dog you know what I mean or someone out uh, going fishing you'll see and Jay his family is still out there yeah Oh, God. Can you know, to put your camera back on? Yeah. Uh -huh. That's the highlight. Yeah, I'll put that one on for you. Oh, God, you've got me done. Got a new tube. Hey, Jane. I'll put you on this, that one. Yeah. Yeah. Dad! Can't do I move that? Hey, can't get the other one on. I'll be in a bit. Anyway, so he's still going to have family out there. But law enforcement have said, Hi, Robbie. Law enforcement has said, No complaints are coming to this office. Oh, come off. Come off it now. We know Seth don't lie. He won't lie. If he's searching, this is why he stopped the searches, because his search parties, his groups of people that was going out, was um, being followed, being harassed. Um, we don't know about threats, but possibly. We know one YouTuber who was out there on the rivers and the lakes, He was out there with another YouTuber. They'd been out there two weekends. And then after the second weekend, they had to back off because of the threats that came towards them. She just... Yeah, she holds the hand. But then someone said, perhaps she did it now. And he knew then that she was going to sleep. And he'd arrange the prior for someone to go in about one o'clock, whatever, and take Sebastian. But the thing is, if someone went in and took Sebastian, right, kidnapped him, why would they pick up his glasses but not his shoes? You're going to take a child out of the bed. You just think, oh, well done, there's his glasses, but just take his glasses. Right? You don't. So he wasn't took out of his bed. He wasn't carried out of the house. Something happened on the Sunday. Oh, this is what I was going to say. Christmas. Faith was at Chris and Katie's. Right? Now, we all know... Chris did not want Sebastian around fight. So Sebastian was at his dad's. So good old Katie who sends her son back off to her dad's. Not spend Christmas with her son. Right? But spends Christmas with his daughter. And then Seth said whenever uh, Sebastian was at his dad's because Faith was at theirs, He'd be on really long FaceTime calls, right? Now, how do we know, not know, that, say, perhaps Sebastian told Faith, who at the time was, what, six, would be six, told Faith something? Or did Chris lose it with Faith Right, lose it like where he gave her a slap again. Where he gave her a slap. Because when she went up 
literally days after she got home in the new year, the mother put in for temporary full temporary full custody or something like that of her daughter. And if you look at all the court documents, I've got them somewhere, I'd have to pull them up. We can look at that another night. But if you look at all the court documents, it starts from around about, I think it's the 5th or summer of January, 5th or 6th of January, 2024. So, did Sebastian tell Faith something, and then Faith goes home and tells her mum? Right? We will never know because everything has been sealed in that case. All documents, paperwork, everything has been sealed. The public can't get hold of it. Right? So, we reckon, this YouTuber was saying this morning, she reckons something happened over the Christmas period. Right? Either with Sebastian telling Faith something, or maybe Chris getting angry with Faith for being on the phone, FaceTime with Sebastian for so long. Right? And... But something happened. It happened. Something happened for the mother to go in and put that temporary order in the courts for full custody or something like that. So, was that brought up in one of the hearings? We don't know. What happened over the Christmas, would that have come up? Whatever happened over that Christmas period, would it have been brought up in the hearing? Possibly. He even had to go for a psych evaluation. Right? Finger red number one. Finger red number one. Finger red number one. <laughs> anyway, but something definitely happened over the Christmas period for that mother because that child's gone back and she's told her mother. Whatever it was, be it Sebastian told her something or Chris exploded with the fact that she was always FaceTiming Sebastian. And we all know he didn't want her to have nothing to do with Sebastian. We all know that. So, it's not about you, Chris. It's about finding and bringing Sebastian home. So, once more, Chris and Katie, where is Sebastian? In your of your lives, this is not a game. Exactly, Sonny. It, this is not a game. Are we ever going to get to this bit I want to listen to? No, we're not. I don't think that's fair. So then tell Seth when I'm talking, let me finish. Okay, Seth, let him finish. Yes, Seth, please let him finish. There are conversations you've had that should have never been out in the public light, and you know it. And because you did that, it started a lot of rumors. Own it, accept it, and move on from it. No. I told you on Sunday, I supported you. I would be there for you no matter what, how ugly this got. But I'm not going to stand by and watch you disrespect me, my family, my wife, or anybody for that matter. A lot of rumors got started because you went on social media and you opened your mouth and said some things you shouldn't have said. Accept it. I'll show you the videos. You don't need to show now, you the videos. now, in hindsight, that is a conversation you and I need to have offline, away from everybody else in our own private conversation. You and I, we sit down and we can talk. Literally, please. You had people watch us doing it Sunday at that vigil. Well, they I were snapping that, pictures because they were trying to get some juicy information. Patricia, uh, let's we, answer, we move on let's, to the question. Yes, please. Yeah, let's, uh, there's a question here in chat, and I've heard this, and Chris, this is a good one I'd like to clear up. Okay. Is it true? Oh, God. Oh, that Chris to told Seth you will Sorry. find your son at church. No. Okay. No. 
That's what, what he's saying is what, if I went to church, maybe I'd find it my son. So in other words, if you went and went to church and talked to the Lord, that is that what you were saying? Yes, Chris? that is the, what the whole conference in reference was. Not, you go to a church and you'll find it. Hold on a second. I'm sorry, Chris, finish? I'm sorry. No, it's, no, I'm just, I'm talking because why, I understand I see where people got that. Right. But that is a conversation that Seth and I had privately. You know, I'm sorry, right. but we're not going to sit here and drag certain things into this. It has nothing to do with it. Okay. I told Seth, you know, basically we should all go to church. We should pray. That's exactly what it was in reference to. Understood. Seth, I'm. go ahead. It's your turn now. There's better way to upset it, Chris. Okay, and that's semantics. Are you the thing that I don't go to church? Is that I didn't say anything about you not going to church or going to church? Can we go to the next question? Sebastian? No, it's not. Can we move to the next question? All right, thank you. Okay, Uh, how about this? Because you guys have been on here for almost three hours, and I really appreciate it. And I do think Chris and Seth need to talk off air. Um, Let's talk about what we do know. We do know, and this is how we started out the live stream. We do know that Sebastian uh, was last seen publicly at Texas Roadhouse on Sunday. We know he was seen on camera uh, t- taking out the garbage at some point. Correct. We we know that there is a possibility that the kids did not pick up Seth leaving the house because it was so dark. Sebastian. Actually, Sebastian. Not I'm sorry, what did I say? I'm sorry. You I'm, said so Seth. <laughs> Seth, I'm sorry. You're not missing Seth. You're right here. Sebastian. I like to be yeah, I understand. I hear you. Um, Sebastian was not seen. Ability that Sebastian was not seen leaving the house because it was too dark. Okay, there were certain dogs that hit on Sebastian. There were three of them that went down to the retaining pond. According to Chloe, that retaining pond has been searched. It was actually been drained, and it has been walked and searched. Okay, so that's that's good. I think that's what we know about that night and then you know out before he went missing i think that's all we know for certain now i want to ask all of you what is the next step chloe and heather i'll go to you two first and then i'll go to the two uh the two gentlemen i'm sorry my dog was barking what did you that's say that's okay i said what is the next step what is the next step for you oh dog oh dog drop that link what link mike what link? I've got so many links. I don't know which link you're on about. So if you put it in, let me know. I'll let you, I can drop that link if I've got that link. Okay. SG was harming it. That, did you see the court case? Talked the other day. I'll show you. I it. I'm here. I'm done here. From 5 p.m. yesterday to like 10, 30, 11 p.m. last night. Oh, yeah, I'll show that stuff. I will show you. Yes, I've got all that information. I'll be showing that. Bye. Can't believe it's so far. What is the next step for the public? What would you like us to do? What do you think you guys are going to do? Well, for us right now, we are really focused on getting Q in. Um, Chloe and I are working on a report and some maps to try to give them an idea of areas that need to be searched or researched. Um, and I think I think really um, the next big step is getting us all on the same page and working together. Mm -hmm. Um, And even though this is a mess right now, I I think this is a huge. um, And I'm hoping that, uh, you know, as I said, uh, Chris had called me earlier and. uh... Right. The stream yard link. Right. Uh... I don't know. Is this it at the top? Uh, is it? This might be the link. But I, the link is normally in the description at the very bottom of everything I post. 
Okay, but try that one. Right, Mike, are you Lauren? Watch me. Mike, are you law enforcement or ex law enforcement? Because it's handy to have someone who knows something about law enforcement. I don't know anything about law enforcement over there in the USA, see. I know our law enforcement is. I was watching some. Um, programs to get out my son's, and it's about our road traffic cops. And I tell you, when they pull up someone, when they go after someone who's in a car, they're going hard and they're going fast. They block on me, they don't get a chance to move anything before the cars have even stopped. Most of them, some of them, have got out of the car car already and I'm heading to a person's car. But oh my god, they do not they're going hard and fast. So it doesn't give the person in the car a chance to even breathe. Right, let's go back to this. I'm, I think I might have missed it, you know, because I can't right be, before the show started remember. my message Chloe and was kind of talking to her about what you guys were going to talk about because I wanted to, some of the things that he cleared up with me, I wanted to make sure she was aware of. Mm -hmm. But, you know, reaching out to me and then reaching out to you guys on the podcast tonight, I think it's a huge step in the right direction. He's angry, but once we get past that, I think maybe we can all work together and start putting our heads together on where we need to look for Sebastian. Thank you. Very good. Uh, Chris, what would you like to see us do? What, what do you think? At this point, Keep spreading the flyers, keep keeping his name out there in of good graces, not of in a negative light. Um, uh, are you? Are you? Words, if you know something, say something. Don't wait two weeks. Don't wait three weeks. I right. told her the same thing. There's so many tips that come in weeks later instead of the moment that they come in. When you get these tips, you call 911. You call TBI. You don't call these PIs. You don't call Seth. You don't call us. You just call the law enforcement agency. Keep spreading the flyers, spreading the word, prayers. Trust me, keep the prayer warriors out there. Sorry, I missed you first uh, when you first put that up, Mike. I didn't see that. Right. So you are an ex-officer. I only love, I mean, look, only love not hate. Waterboarding works. Oh, if only we could. If only we could. I think we missed it. We need them. I Thank agree. you. And I think, um, you know, because of all of the noise, um, people uh, are, have not been reminded to continuously search their properties. Um, and like I said before, everybody else came on here. Um, there's a lot of really large properties in the area and the terrain is treacherous in a lot of areas um, and things get missed. So I think it's important to like center it back to the local level, first of all, mm -hmm. because this has become national and nationally people are giving their opinions. Um, we need the community to come back together and search their acres and acres of property. No, I think we missed it. But what it was is she brought up a point about how she had information given to her. Right? And me or Katie, and she said Katie. She didn't say Katie first. He said it. Right? And phone call was about phone call that was really yesterday he was angry that she brought that up hold on she brought up the fact that she had information given to her which she didn't think was relevant to helping find sebastian right 
you see P was the one who brought up the fact of it being Katie. Oh, you're here backstage. Okay. Right, private chat. Right. Um, it's all right, I didn't realise. <laughs> I have to keep an eye on that back, that backstage one. Um, I think the place is close to where they are now, Tunica, Mississippi, around Lake Tunica, River. Also, ponds and closed RV park. Or very. We're well, 31 miles from her now. Well, well, you see, the thing is, that one dog hanger, her dogs hit on the scent. Believe it or not, after all this time, hit on his scent, or a scent. Well, I'd say to Sebastian, because they did use an item of clothing that law enforcement gave them, I believe, right, for the sniffer dogs. And... Their herd dogs were going in a totally different direction to what law enforcement dogs were going. I'd like to know what direction. Were they heading up towards the school or that way? Were they heading the other way down that pike road? Right? So. It's hard to say. So it's just hard to say. Unless I knew, I'd like to know which direction her dogs were going. We know they wasn't going up towards the construction site. We know that. But was they going up towards the school? And her dogs, the bloodhounds, they are whew, spot on. They love what they do. I mean, it fascinated me yesterday when she was talking about the dogs and how their longer ears flop along the ground and it knocks the scent up, up into the noses. And then they take the scent up into the nose. And I thought, wow. I never thought of that before with their long ears. How would they knock the scent up off the ground? So... All done. So uh, it's just unbelievable. But the fact that he's not even wanting them in the area, what, what has he got to say? He don't want them in the area. Now, what I want to do, I want to pull up I did send him to my email. Because I... Oh, come on. We just we always click on something I don't want because my mate get rid of that. Right. Okay. Right. This is how we know we caught 
ซีพีเองอร่อยเอาจังเอาจังไงที่พลังพังงูโอ้ฮะจีกับพี่พลังพังงูโอ้ว่าคือเซนจีในลิงก์ดิสต์อินเนี่ยเอาจังเอฟเอสโอเคฮิสเลกฮิสเลกที่ทุกอย่างจะทำให้มันเป็นพังฮิสเลกฉันไม่เคยทำแบบนี้มาก่อนฉันไม่เคยโอ้ยฉันมีอีเซอักซิสเตชไปเลยไปไปไปไปไปไปไปไปไปไปไปไปไปไปไปไปไปไปไปไปไปไปไปไปไปไปไปไปไปไปไปไปไปไปไปไปไปไปไปไปไปไปไปไปไปไปไปไปไปไปไปไปไปไปไปไปไปไปไปไปไปไปไปไปไปไปไปไปไปไปไปไปไปไปไปไปไปไปไป Yeah, a, a panel is good because you have other you have other people that try to give like their objections and, or or their likes on the situation. But I can tell you this: this yes. is a very very this is a very unique case. There's so many different variables in this case, and um, yeah, you know you have you, you know the whole term of gut feeling, like a gut feeling, like like you can kind of feel something. You can feel people out that like their energy. And that stepfather, yeah. he he just seems to me like he's guilty as heck. I mean, that's just my opinion. I could be completely wrong, but he just the way he cusses. Well, what? He's getting he's getting frustrated. I think he's getting so frustrated now, and he's not liking it because it's not yeah. going his way. Right, because Seth wants his dog handlers to come in. He doesn't want that because he's got yeah. no control. He's losing the control, and that's what he don't like. Can you hear me, okay, Mike? So can you hear me, so okay? It, it, yeah. So in when you interrogate, because I I was a, I I interrogated people hundreds of times. When you inter interrogate somebody. You play on their emotions, and when they are guilty as heck, I don't like to say the other word because I'm a Christian. I don't like to, um, but when they're guilty like yeah. that, they they attack back. In other words, when somebody is truly okay. innocent, they they ask for your help. In other words, they're yeah. they're submissive. They're submissive, right? In other words, if I'm if I come to you, if I come to you, right, and I have you in a room, right, and I'm attacking you. And I, I'm 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 calling you. You you did this. You did this. And you're like, I didn't do it. I didn't do this. It's, that's it's not true. And you can feel their energy. Everything in life, everything in life yeah. is about energy. And the energy that he gives off is yeah. a guilty energy. Do you believe that? That, well, he, that he's guilty. I get this. I have that good feeling. Yes, I do. I have that good feeling, and I've talked about my good feeling many a time before, many times. It's like sure. when I see someone, like sometimes I don't even have to meet that person, right? That person, yeah. um, I'll tell you about a girl on you. She was seeing some lag, 
right? He never met the lad. And she told me about him. And I said, drop him. Drop him. Get out of that relationship. It's not going anywhere. Do you know what? Literally, three months later, she left that lad. She left him. Yeah. Because it wasn't going anywhere. It was, being, it was very nasty to her, very controlling. And I said, I'm sorry, it's just how I feel when I hear about something. And when I hear about certain cases like this, I want to be proven wrong. Do you know what I mean? I want them to say, Katie and Chris have been cleared. They are not involved. I want that to happen. Because, but I just get that gut feeling, no, that is not going to happen. There's something not right about Chris. And I think Katie is holding back. Don't know if it's because of maybe Chris's control on her, possibly. But she's not telling everything. Yeah, but the the, 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 the stepfather. Yeah, no, there's and, and let me give you my let me give you yeah, my background. Step. Okay, so I, I went I, when I went oh, to college. I went through college. I have a criminal justice degree and I have a minor in psychology. So in other words, when you have criminal justice and you have psychology, you understand how the brain works. The criminal brain, not like I'm yeah. not a, 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 the criminal brain. How it how it maneuvers. And I look at him and I hear his speech patterns. The biggest thing in life is speech patterns. Like people, they give themselves away by the way they move. You ever heard it like how you move dictates, you know, your personality. And it he's so yeah. aggravated and he's so disgusting. Like in an interview, he curses like a hundred times. Let me tell you something. If my son was missing, I'd be crying. I wouldn't be cursing at somebody. I'd be like, what can I do to help? What can I yeah. do to, to, to find him? He's like, he don't give a crap. He's like, hey, F that, F this, F that. If, if you notice, he's a narcissist, right? It's all about him. So he puts the focus off of the, the missing yes. child and he puts the focus on himself like he's the victim. He's not the victim. The child's the victim. It's a narcissist yeah. sociopath. That's it's classic. classic, and the world right. sees who he is. Uh, yeah. yeah, there's two options. I don't there's think two he will join forces. Yeah. yeah, there's two options. What he can won't happen? Join forces. Yeah, yeah. On. there's only two options either they're going to find the child passed away, Go or on. Gonna, they're going to find him hidden somewhere. Yeah. What, what what I think I was observing everything. What I think happened is I think I think this guy, Chris Proudfoot, whatever his name is, is extremely abusive. Like he's an abusive person. And this child, even though he's a teenager, he has the mental capacity of a child. When you have someone with autism, they have half of the brain function. In other words, they're even though they're 15, 16, they're like five, six years old. You know, their brain capacity, you know. They're, very, they're extremely smart, but they don't process things the same. They process things differently. But I think this abusive, controlling man was was hurting this kid mentally. And I believe maybe, maybe allegedly, maybe a family member took <laughs> him away. Or took him away. I mean, I hope, I hope that's what happened. I hope that maybe someone stepped in and took this child and took him away from this abusive man. That's what I hope happened. Because if it was me, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know what I would do, you know. And I've dealt with I've dealt with autistic children before. I've dealt with handicapped children, you know, mentally handicapped children before. And they're the sweetest, yeah. most beautiful people in the world. Because you know why? They don't see hatred. They, they think everybody is beautiful. Another they guy. think that, yeah, yeah. And, and it's just for someone... For someone to abuse anybody like that is a disgusting piece of garbage. But he has a record of abusing people. Look, look at the way he treats his wife. Look at the way he speaks in the interviews. 
Okay, so if you, all right, if you interview me, right? So my son is missing, right? So let's just let's just hypothetically say this: my son is missing, and I have two sons, and I have I have children, okay? And I'm gonna you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna interview me. Yeah. I'm not gonna curse. I'm not gonna curse at you. I'm not gonna curse. I'm gonna say, you know, I miss him. I love him. I'm I'm devastated. I can't sleep. You know what? What can I do to help? But he's like, f this, f that. F you, F that. He's showing his narcissism. The guy is guilty. He's guilty as heck. He is. Go ahead. Sorry. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. He's guilty. He's definitely guilty. Yeah. Sorry, my nose, my nose is all blocked up again. But he's definitely yeah. guilty. And he's controlling. And I think like I said earlier, I think something happened over the Christmas period, right? Because Faith was at their house over Christmas. Sebastian was with his dad. His father, Seth, said he'd be on FaceTiming Faith and he'd be on there for hours, right? Yeah. Now, did Chris do something to the little girl? Or did yeah. Sebastian tell that little girl something? And when she's gone home, he, she's told her, mo her mother, because she went straight to the court in the new year and got that yeah. order put in place. Right? Uh, yeah. Temporary yeah. protection or child order or whatever. And that all started in the new year. And then in February, he yeah. wasn't allowed... He wasn't at the house all February, right? That was because, my opinion, he done something to Sebastian. It could be either the belt, or it could be the fact that he may be making him sleep in the garage. He said himself, he didn't like the smell of piss, right? Now, with an autistic child who... We, Regresses. When you get an autistic child, right? It's hard. Yeah. It's hard because, it's like, for not any other child, potty training, it's hard, right? But for an autistic and, child, it's even harder. It, it takes longer. Everything to do with that child takes longer because you have to break yeah. it all down. And do it a little bit at a time. I know this with my own grandsons. You know what I mean? They're both six years yeah. old. They're both very, very, very clever. Right? And but everything they do takes that little bit longer. So for him to regress back into bed wetting and all this law, something was happening in the home. Mm -hmm. Because Seth said it didn't happen at his house. It only happened when he was at home. So what was going on at home for him to regress back to having these accidents at home and at school? Yeah. You know what I mean? And I and, think and, many no, no, perhaps he was having these accidents at school because he had spoken to the school. He did mention something to the school, didn't he? And that's when child services come out. And that when child services said, you can't tell lies about other people because you get them into trouble and then you will get into trouble. So he's thinking, well, I can't even tell him at school no more. He had True. no one to tell. He wouldn't tell his dad because he knew how his dad would react. You know what I mean? And then, and if it was my child and, and my child come and tell me all this, I'd be ripping heads off. Pardon? No, what what you just said what is, is perfectly said. So, my when my son when when my son, my oldest son, when he was younger, you know he was you know chubby, and now my son now is a bodybuilder. But I mean, see when and, and an officer. But when he was younger, he would get picked on, right? But my son would never tell me because he was yeah. he was afraid of what I would do to the people, you know, messing with him. Because I'm going to tell you this. Listen. I will 
the one thing in my life that I'll go to prison for is my children. I will, and my ex-wife, I, I will go to prison. Yeah. If someone is hurting my child, I will go. I will go. I'll give my life for my children. And any man and any real good woman will do the same thing. But the thing is, is that sometimes they're afraid to tell their father. I wish that Sebastian would have told his father because maybe his father could have stepped in and stopped all this abuse because he was abused. He was. Even the mother said it, that he was abused. So Chris Proudfoot, you're a piece of garbage. You're but an you abusive see, man. Go ahead. But you see, the thing is, Seth is caught between a rock and a... To, between two rocks, sort of thing. Yeah. He couldn't... He would ask Sebastian why he didn't want to go back home. Now, Sebastian yeah. would say, wouldn't give him a reason. Now, that is for Seth not to take him back home just because he didn't want to go back home was not a good, a strong enough reason for him to not go back home. Because if he'd have kept him with him, Katie would have dragged him into, into court. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or that, because that, Sebastian that... didn't want to go back home. He had to have a strong reason. And the thing, the thing is this, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a victim mentality and it's, it's, it's classic, classic psychology. Chris Proudfoot is a manipulator and he is an antagonist and he's a bully and he, he preys on people that are weaker. Like if he tried that crap with me or tried that crap with my ex-wife, he'd be on the floor. I mean, he, I'm, I'm, I'm this is, I'm not talking about allegedly. But he'd be on the floor because if you come at someone with a strong will, you're destroyed. But people like him, they prey on the weak. Does that make sense? They prey on the weak and they manipulate the weak minded yeah. people because they look for victims. They look for people that are have been abused in the past and then they abuse them some more. Yeah. You know, so I don't know. I don't even know what's in his skeleton yeah. closet. I can tell you this. I can tell you this, okay? I went through abuse when I was little. I did. Physical, not not anything S word, but physical. And I became the best father that you've ever met in your life. I turned that hatred, that pain into being the most loving father ever. Everybody listening, if you go through these things in life, turn it around, flip it, become the best person in someone else's life. I, that, well, that, that's all I'm trying to say. Go ahead. I, yeah. Well, I'll tell you something. Years ago, my daughter made out to her boyfriend at the time because I was separated from the father. So I was living up in Scotland while I was still in, in, down in England. And my daughter, my dad, I was to her boyfriend, I was some sort of mass murderer. Like, not to mess with my mom, she'll kill you. She'll put you mm -hmm. six foot under. But that sure. was me. I, if anyone had hurt my children, even now, they're 32 and 34 years old. Anyone messes with my children. I'm 58 and I'll tell you, I will put you under. And come to my grandchildren, don't even go there because I will definitely put you six foot under. I believe you. I believe because you. I won't and, stand and for you. This, I don't like it. <laughs> this is the thing. It's like, this is the thing. I, I, I'm, I'm a very sweet person, right? I will help anybody. I will, I'll, I'll give you an example. I'm like, there's a guy on the floor, right? He's on the floor next to a restaurant I'm going to get some food. And I'm like, bro, are you hungry? Yeah. I took him inside and bought him food. But I'm saying, but at the same token, at the same token, if somebody was to try to attack me, the switch flips, you know, hun, I'm yes. six foot three, 215 oh, yes. pounds. I'm not a little guy, you know, but what I'm trying to say is that I don't try to engage anybody unless they have to engage me. But if I have to, I will. But what I'm trying to say is we need more men and women to guard each other. Everybody listening, we need to look out for each other because the police don't give a crap. They don't. I'm, I'm, listen, I'm an ex-officer. Okay, I'm, 
they're there to take the report and make their money and leave. <laughs> back, 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 back when yeah, I was an officer. I'm, it, let me let me give you an example. Back when I was an officer, I, I got invested. Like in other words, I would call people. I would get their number. I would I would check on their kids. I would do all these different things. But it made me too comparable. It made me too involved, or you know, in their life. You have to be able to cut and run, you know, cut it off. Because if you get too invested, then you yeah. become emotionally attached, you know. So policing now is very difficult. It's very, it's very cardboard. Like when a cop comes to your house, what's going on? Okay, all right, sorry, all right, see you later. But back in the, but back in the day, like back when I was an officer, back in the uh, the late nineties. You know, we would follow. We would follow up. We'd come and check on you. How's your kids doing? How, we would go to their schools. I, I would go to kids' schools. Hey, this is my yeah. friend over here, Kayla. You know, like like in other words, we would we would bring them up. Like it was a thing that we did. But now it's very 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 vanilla. Like they don't care. So what I'm trying to say to everybody is, I know you're in the UK. You're in the UK. Yeah, I am. Are you in the I'm in the United Kingdom? Well, I'm up in Scotland. Okay. So so I <laughs> Scotland, I love I, I love Scottish people. The best some of the best shit. Scottish are some of the best troops ever. But um <laughs> you know, they are no, they are the best. They are the absolute best. Um Scottish guys are fucking crazy, but they are so loyal. Um but <laughs> um as I'm gonna say, you know, uh, the police now See, I'm in Virginia. I'm in the United States. I'm in Virginia. And Virginia is is an open carry state. Yeah. So all I can say to anybody listening is 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 get a firearm. Keep it in your home. There's a there's a rifle right there. I'm not gonna show it. I'm not gonna hurt your channel. But there's a rifle yeah. sitting right there. No. So if someone was to come into my home, <laughs> yeah. if someone was to come to my home, they're, they're not gonna leave. You know, that that is what it is. But in um yeah. in the United Kingdom. You know, the, the gun laws are the strictest in the world. But at the same token, if you see all the knife attacks, they're, they're, they use, you know, all the knife attacks, you know. So you have to protect yourself. Just be careful out there. You know, I, I, you seem like a very nice person. You know, I, um, you know what I love to watch? You ever see the videos of the King's Guard? No. No. You never seen the King's Guard? The King's Guard. Where they're at the castle? You have the the, uh, the the uh the the troopers on the horses. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, beautiful. I see them. Beautiful. I mean, and it's funny because people will try to make fun of people will try to like mess with the guards. You know, like those are those are yeah. actually bedded soldiers. That's not some guy in a coat. Exactly. These are soldiers, and. It's the king's life. You don't bar. mess with them, guys. No. Yeah. God you don't bless mess the king. God bless. I look, see, let me ask you this. I yeah. see these videos. Let me ask think, you this. Do you, why are you doing that? Do you miss the queen or do you prefer the king? Wow. It's just the you know, honest whatever. Yeah. Uh, I miss the queen. Yeah. We haven't really seen much of the king because yeah, yeah, it got, it got put on his I, own and yeah, then he was I too killed. So we've not really seen the much queen. of it. Yeah, um, I miss the queen. I, I, I miss the, the queen. queen. I do miss the queen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And it's funny because he every had man time to prove himself. <laughs> let me give you. Let me give you why. Because in a psychology rise. Every man wants to submit to his woman. And, and, and I'm just telling you, like, like the queen was <laughs> all of our mother. No, no, the queen was our mother. That was yes. our mother. And we had to yes, submit to her. Yeah. But the king, it's a little bit more dominant, but he doesn't do anything. He's, and um, what I do like, what I do like is that um, Harry did come back when the king was you know, inaugurated, Harry did come back, even though he was estranged from the family, he did come back to show his respects. He did, you know, and, um, yes, you know, will, yeah, Willie, William is next in line. So if something, God forbid, if something happened to the King, I'm not asking for anything to happen to the King, God bless the King. But if something was to happen to the King, William will be the King, you know, he will be the King, 
you know, yes. so, you know, yeah. yeah. Is no, I, I love so free to do what he wants. And, and I, I think, think, and I think William is not so free I, to do what he wants. Yeah, I think We're William would time. make a great. Yeah, I think William would make a great king. I think he'd be an amazing king. I, I think he oh, would. Yeah. That's just that's my opinion. Yeah. I think he's a very astute, very intelligent young man. He is now. Harry had all of the um, the military experience. You know, Harry was an Apache pilot. Did you know that Harry was a, a serious soldier? Like yes, Harry I have. flew through the years. You know, so these these young yes. men aren't just what I'm trying to say. Everyone listening, these young men aren't spoiled brats. They they actually went through massive amount of training. You know, and um, even though I don't like Harry for the decisions he made. You know, leaving the family, but he still is a soldier, and I salute him. He's a soldier. You know, he's an officer. Yes. You know, you, you can't I dispute like that. Yeah. No, I like Harry. Yeah. Uh, I can understand why he did what he did because yeah. he still got the the memories of his mother. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? He still got the memory of his mother. And what she was put through, right? So was, he's by doing what he's doing, he's protecting his wife. Yeah. But I don't think he should have said half the things he has said. So it's that, just that. Yeah, that just was the hardest thing. Harry. That was yeah. That was the hardest thing I've ever seen. When when De when De Deanna passed away, that was the hardest thing to ever see. She was a bastion of light. You know, and everywhere she went, she touched people's hearts. Yeah. Like she had, she had a soul that could change you. You know, and 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 she had that about her. Yeah. You know, and she wanted to break away, and she wanted to move on with her life. And the monarchy at the t at the time was like, you know, you're gonna, you know, we can't let this happen. But the monarchy did not k word her. The British government had nothing to do with her death. It was the paparazzi, and that's what happened. Oh, darn it, Can you put cream on my bum? Yeah. yeah, I'll come in here. Well, no. It was sad. It was sad. Okay, okay, okay. Right, I've got to go because my grandson is wanting me to do something for him. So thank you for coming up, Mike. No it was lovely having someone up here. Great talking to you. Hopefully, you can have your day. If you want to come up again, just come in chat and I'll put the link out for you. No problem. I okay, subscribe right? to you. I'll put subscribe on right. my thing. I'd love to. I'd love to talk to you again. Thank you. It was a pleasure meeting. A pleasure meeting you. You know, have a great day and and uh, that's it. Okay. Thank you, anybody, Mike. Thank you. Bye. You're welcome. Right. I'm just going out. Right. Bye. Bye. Okay, okay. I'm going to Well, everyone, I've got to go now because my grandson is um, pestering me. Okay, okay. <laughs> my grandson need, really needs me now, so I've got to go. So I'm going to... Um... Right. Something's happening. Oh, that's it, he's gone. All right. Um, my grandson needs my help, so I'm going to have to go, and I'll say goodnight very quickly, and thank you. I will talk about this again on Sunday, okay? I won't be on tomorrow, but I'll be on Sunday, and we'll pick up from where we left off. So thank you again for everyone being here, and...